Aegis is well known for their beloved industrial sailor ship the Reclaimer. But in 2018, Cloud Imperium Games introduced another industrial ship, the Vulcan. Measuring almost 39 meters in length and 16.5 meters wide, this medium-sized utility ship can repair, refuel and rearm small ships with deployable drones. Many players and long-term backers of the game are eagerly awaiting the release of the ship. Today I want to dig a little bit deeper into the history of the Vulcan, its initial concept and development strategy. I am Jack Long, welcome to Jack Space Games on YouTube and welcome to the making of the Vulcan. I hope you enjoyed this video. If by the end of this video you think I did a great job, make sure to support my efforts by clicking the like button and maybe even subscribing. Subscribing to my channel is free and you will see new content like this released every time it's available. But let's get started. The Aegis Vulcan's journey began as the final addition to a 2017 lineup of role focused ships, which included the Hammerhead fleet screen and a Pioneer colony builder. Unlike these, the Vulcan, initially seen as a simpler concept, was actually a complex undertaking. It was designed to pioneer mechanics not yet seen in Star Citizen. Repairing, refueling, rearming and later drone control. Originally envisioned as a small to medium workshop ship, its concept evolved significantly due to Chris Roberts' input. He envisioned it as a career starter for various support roles, introducing foundational elements of support gameplay on a smaller scale, unlike larger platforms which explore these roles more broadly. The Vulcan's initial brief focused primarily on refueling, without considering a drone platform. It was conceptualized as a smaller utility ship, akin to a freelancer in size, intended to start the utility ladder that would culminate in larger ships like the Crucible. Designed as a combat-ready support ship with limited armament and robust shields armor, it could be deployed during battles, much like a medic in a first-person shooter game. The ship was meant to be versatile enough to offer NPC services, like in-flight rearming at a discount. However, this simple description underestimated the developmental challenges. The team had to create a ship capable of three new tasks, interacting with over 100 existing spacecraft, some of which were not initially designed with a universal refuel rearm repair system in mind. The Vulcan's development required not just conceptualizing a docking nozzle, but inventing new functional capabilities within Star Citizen's already complex world. This ship wouldn't just affect in-game combat scenarios, but also significantly impact the game's mechanics and player strategies. The concept of in-flight refueling, a cornerstone in aviation history, has been essential for extending aircraft range for military and civilian purposes. This challenging maneuver, historically executed by skilled pilots, was initially proposed for Star Citizen to be done directly between two ships. However, it was later adapted to use drones, aligning with the game's futuristic setting. The Aegis Vulcan embodies this legacy, offering a unique challenge for support pilots whose role is to ensure the success of others. Unlike the Starfarer, which is mainly a fuel transporter with secondary refueling capabilities, the Vulcan is dedicated solely to support roles, excluding transport. It aims to be a single-person support craft, accompanying bombers and fighters to extend their operational capacity by providing in-flight services that would otherwise require a carrier or base. The Vulcan was envisioned to attract a player base interested in a support role, acting as a force multiplier in both military and civilian aspects of the game. These players would aid in transport convoys, rescue operations and sustaining the game's economy. While not in the limelight like combat pilots, Vulcan pilot skills are crucial for mission success. The Vulcan's role extends beyond refueling. It is also tasked with rearming and repairing spacecraft in combat zones. 
This concept is unprecedented in real-world aviation, where logistical challenges limit such capabilities. In the expansive universe of Star Citizen, however, the need for rearming during extended missions across multiple star systems becomes vital. Lastly, the Vulcan was initially thought to feature a space-exposed workshop for small-scale repairs, a supplementary function to its primary fuel and munitions replenishment roles. This concept evolved from a simple workshop idea to a more complex system, with players performing external vehicle activities, or so-called EVA, for repairs, utilizing hand tools and manipulator arms, differentiating from larger repair platforms like the Crucible. The introduction of drones was a pivotal solution for the Aegis Vulcan, aligning with the development of other star citizenships like miners and explorers. By leveraging multi-purpose drones, the Vulcan could embody its intended role as a versatile support craft, without constraining future spacecraft designs. These drones, termed Basic Articulated Repair Drones or BARD, are equipped with robotic manipulators for small repairs, fuel pumping and carrying replacement parts and munitions. The Vulcan houses several drones eventually finalized to four, ready to be dispatched for various maintenance tasks. The ship design process led by Foundry 42 began with initial sketches to establish the Vulcan's basically silhouette and integration with Aegis design principles demonstrating the drone system's utilization. Multiple design options were explored, varying in features like side panels, landing approach and scale. Four designs were presented to Chris Roberts, who selected elements from two favorites for further refinement, including reducing the size of the VTOLs. The final design merged the military aesthetics of the Javelin Destroyer with a functional drone-carrying form resembling a beetle with an abdomen filled with hard-working drones. When developing the Aegis Vulcan, Andrew Lay, a CIG concept artist, focus was on creating a base 3D model that authentically represented its multifaceted role, particularly in fueling. He initially designed a large detachable external fuel pod to enhance its capacity. But this concept evolved as CIG aimed for a balance in Vulcan's visual identity, moving away from a mini tanker look. The cockpit cabin and the forward hood of the ship underwent significant refinements. The artists explored various viewport designs before settling on one that perfectly matched the Vulcan's utilitarian nature. Each iteration paid close attention to a ship's face, incorporating practical elements like tool racks and scanners. Ultimately, the Vulcan emerged as a distinct entity in the Aegis line, balancing its unique features with the brand's signature design language. In designing the Vulcan's cockpit, Andrew's goal was to balance a broad field of view with the ship's functional aesthetic. It was vital that the cockpit not only provided an expansive view for the captain, but also integrated seamlessly with the ship's operational elements. The team experimented with various shapes and chair positions to ensure access to Aegis signature physical monitors and controllers. This setup was crucial for drone interaction. The final design featured a forward suspended monitor bank and floating controllers on pylons, offering the captain an enhanced view and efficient use of space for drone system operations. In choosing the manufacturer for the Vulcan, Cloud Imperium Games quickly gravitated towards Aegis Dynamics. Despite a large number of Aegis ships already in the fleet, the Vulcan's role as a long-standing support ship with a rich history in the UAE military made Aegis the ideal choice. 
Their status as the historic prime contractor for the Navy, especially during the Mesa area, solidified this decision. The team at Foundry 42, with their deep understanding of Aegis design, language and extensive experience in building military ships for both Star Citizen and Squadron 42, played a key role in the selection. The naming process was another interesting journey. Initially, they referred to the ship internal as Turn, a nod to an old naval practice. This was more for a conceptual organization than a final decision. However, as the ship's development progressed and its role became clearer, it needed a name that matched the Aegis fleet's martial character. Unlike other ships, where naming can involve lengthy debates and countless suggestions, Vulcan was proposed by lead writer Dave Haddock and it immediately resonated with the team. Vulcan, the Roman god of fire and metalworking. Hmm, perfectly encapsulated the spirit of this versatile support ship. Despite initial reservations about its similarity to the Avro Vulcan, a 1950s British bomber, they discovered that this historical aircraft also served as a refueling model, further affirming the choice. With this serendipitous connection, Chris Roberts enthusiastically endorsed Vulcan as the official name. As we conclude our exploration of the Aegis Vulcan's journey, we've seen how its development not only shaped a multifaceted support ship, but also how it intertwined with the vibrant tapestry of Star Citizen's universe. The Vulcan, set to premiere in a future patch, is a testament to meticulous design and the spirit of collaboration. The ship's reveal involved a series of compelling images, each capturing the Vulcan's diverse roles. From air-to-air -air refueling, a dramatic rendezvous with an eclipse, to its presence in a UAE battle group, showcasing its integral role in fleet operations. These visuals, alongside different liveries, representing its core functions. They highlight the Vulcan's versatility in rearming, repairing and refueling. The lore team's integration of the Vulcan with CTRs, space gas stations and a unique United Wayfarers Club presentation further enriches its narrative, inviting players to join the ranks of dedicated support pilots. As the Vulcan gears up to redefine support roles in the game, it stands as a beacon of cooperation and resilience in space, ready to assist damaged, stranded or impaired ships. It embodies the community spirit symbolizing players working together against the vast expanse of the void. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the making of the Aegis Vulcan. I'm Jack Long and this has been a special feature on Jack's Space Games. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, subscribe and join us as we continue to explore the ever-expanding universe of Star Citizen. Until next time, keep navigating the stars.